Language is laid in layers across the landscape. And if you learn to read it, you can learn the stories of the people who've lived there and have settled. There's a place called Dal Rai in the Galilee Glens. That means it's the king's place, a meadow where any king would love to graze his cattle. But, well, it's one thing to remember place names, but how would you recognize a king? By what they wore, by how they behaved? I have a story that tells of the life of a man who was born the son of a king, became a slave, became a warrior, a brigand, a law unto his own, and eventually became a king of Norway again. It's possible that he even travelled to Galilee. But we'll start his story when he's already had some success and he's won fame as a well weather-worn warrior. And him and his men were gathered in their ships near the uh, near the country of a queen called Gira. Now Gira, hearing that there were many ships there, summoned them, uh, well, invited them for a feast, uh, to feast over the winter so that they could rest from the sea. And while they were there, Gira and uh, Olaf, that's the name of the story, the man in the story, well, they got on quite well together. And Olaf, you know, asked if Gira was having any problems with any of the towns in her kingdom. And she mentioned that there were a few that weren't paying their taxes, weren't paying for protection, and weren't paying their dues. So Olaf readied his axe and made good and went down and, well, let me just say he encouraged the townspeople to pay their taxes and give Gira her due, due credit. And they got close and they got married. And they were probably really good years. I mean, there he was. Uh, he had all his fine clothes, he had all the silver, he had a queen, and uh, well, he was living out the, the lifestyle maybe he imagined his father, Trygve, once had. Then tragedy struck. Tragedy struck. Akira died. It's hard to know what went on in his head at that time, but history records that he went raiding. He became a Viking again, a king on his own longship. And he raided down to Friesland, the low countries. He raided up north to Orkney. He raided uh, the lands of the Scots in Dalreaton. He raided the Irish. He raided the Isle of Man. And around then, perhaps, he raided Galloway as well. Maybe he visited Whitworn. Maybe not to raid. Maybe to raid. Who knows? He raided further south down to Mercia and the lands of the Saxons until he came to the Scilly Isles. And while he was there, Maybe he had a reflective moment um, because he heard about this seer, someone who could see the future. And well, being a king, or at least wanting to be a king, and having had a few unexpected turns in his life already, somebody who could tell his future, that would be a good thing. But how could he trust him? He got the biggest, tallest man in his longship to put on the finest clothes and to travel to visit the seer and to pretend that he was Olaf. But <laughs> before he got to the door, the seer, who, seeing the future and being a prophet, could tell through tricks, looked at the guy and went, look, if Olaf wants to come and talk to me, Olaf can come himself. No good dressing somebody up like a peacock to try and fool me. That was pretty good. So, well, Olaf reckoned that the seer was worth checking out and went himself this time. And they had a chat and they talked. Now, it's really difficult to give advice to a king. If you tell them lots of bad stuff, then they're not going to believe you. Um, if you tell them lots of good stuff, they're going to blame you when things go wrong. So the seer gave him a bit of a mixture. He told him that uh, Olaf would become king of Norway and his fame would live on. He would have word fame well won that would last the ages. But also, he told him that when he returned to his ships, there would be a mutiny and half his men would fight the other half to try and get rid of Olaf. Not only that, but Olaf would be badly injured in the battle and he would be carried off the battlefield on a shield, which also meant that Olaf would win. So it wasn't all bad. Olaf, had must, Olaf must have had lots of confused thoughts as he was walking back to the ship, but maybe he got his axe ready just in case. 
And just as, uh, just as had been said, when he got back to his ships, there was a mutiny and half his men rose up to try and take control of the ships. So there was a fight and Olaf was wounded, wounded quite badly um, and had to lie there for seven days while he got better. After the end of those seven days though, well, that was twice the seer had seen the future and told it right. So he went up and he talked and he found out more about the seer, found out that the seer was a prophet, a monk, uh, one of the Irish Christians, uh, the Irish Sea Christians. And, uh, well, yeah, we'll have to say to get baptized. Um, got some people to help teach the ways of Christianity. The, the stories tell of different things that happen after that. But one of it is a really happy event, maybe. But it shows something of the way that perhaps Olaf's character changed. There was a thing called. Now, a thing is a meeting where everybody gets together to discuss or to, diso or to resolve difficult matters. There would be a place where the thing would be called. And sometimes that place would be called Tingwald or Tinnald. There's a Tinnald on the Isle of Man. There's a Tinnald uh, north of Dumfries. Um, but this one was neither of those tin places, thing places. Uh, it was in the north of England, and there was a, a, a lady of great renown called Geda, who was the sister of Olaf Curran, the king of Dublin, and claiming to be king of Ireland. Geda had had a rich uh, husband in uh, Mercia, a rich English husband, but he died, and now she was looking around for a new husband. And so she'd called a thing to see, well, who was available and she could choose which one she liked. Olaf turned up at this meeting, this mass gathering of uh, wonderful warriors, wearing his old fishing gear, uh, the, the sort of salt still in his beard, uh, hard worn, not his finest clothes. Everyone else had dressed up for the occasion and pleated their beards and wearing gold and silver, showing off who they were. However, out of the crowd, Gida saw Olaf and in a wee chat and they got on well together and well, the long and short of it is they got engaged! Well, hey, happy celebration! Well, it would have been, except amongst the guests was one man called Alfine. Now Alfine made his living out of being a duelist. He would challenge people to fights and seeing as how he'd made his living from this way, he was pretty good at it. Well, if you think about it, if you've lived by the sword and you know how to fight, uh, if you challenge a farmer who spent all of his time looking after crops and getting rich, who's going to win? Well, there was a set way to do it. Two people would go out to an island and they would resolve their difference and then uh, only one of them would come home. No more argument. <sighs> this match, though, was set up slightly differently. Uh, because it wasn't just Alfin who challenged Olaf, it was Alfin and all of his crew challenged Olaf and all of his crew. One man with 12 followers against another man with 12 followers. Anyway, the day of the fight was set. Gaeta was probably watching, uh, looking onwards. She was canny, she was cunning. She kind of had an idea how this was going to play out. Who do you think is going to win? Alfin pulled his shining sword and struck a pose of a fighter. He's fast with his blade. <laughs> Olaf had an axe. This axe, maybe had been with him a long time. It's a, not a subtle weapon. They squared off against each other and Olaf used two, two blows. First one <gasps> took the sword right out of Alfine's hand. The second one clouted him right across the head. But it didn't kill him. It just knocked him unconscious. And then Olaf bound Alfine, and all of Olaf's men did the same to all of Alfine's men. They were bound, but not killed. Now, is that showing mercy? Has Olaf learned that uh, he doesn't need to kill everybody who challenges him? Or is it a fate worse than death to be beaten, humiliated, and then sent off, uh, exiled? having to make a new name for yourself. Could be a second chance. All depends how you react to it really, doesn't it? But Olaf, uh, 
maybe he realised why it was that Gaida had chosen him. And uh, they settled and they were very happy together. They spent half their time in Ireland and half their time in England and they probably cruised around a bit as well. And well, Olaf did uh, less raiding and probably didn't raid Christian places after that. That is not the end of his life story. Uh, there became a message uh, saying that there was an opportunity to go back to Norway, where his father, Tryggve, had been king, and Harald Fairhair had been king before that, but long before that. But that's all a story to be told on another day. This story is now over, and maybe by looking at the life of people like Olaf, who had been a, a son of a king, a slave, a warrior, and then a king again, and then eventually a saint, Perhaps by looking at their lives, you can learn how you would like to live your life. Or maybe you just enjoy it. Um, either way, make sure you keep your acts safe. Thank you for listening.